From basketball to boxing, America is determined to bring home the gold. And for many, the gymnastics team has the best chance to do so. The team has rising stars and veteran heroes, including Nastia Lukin, who collected a record five medals in Beijing. I spoke to her recently. You'll see why she has a very special reason to feel pride in America. Nastia, how are you? Good, thank you. Now, what I love about you is you've come with a nice little handbag. I have. And when I asked you what was inside it, you said your medals. Mm-hmm. Prove it. Okay. I want to see your medals. <laughs> They're in little baggies. It's a little gold bag for the gold. Okay. It's a gold bag for the gold ones? Yeah. And these are all from Beijing? Yes. So this is a genuine Olympic gold medal? It's I've real. Never, I've never touched one before. Really? They're pretty cool, aren't they? Yep. So they're quite heavy. They are heavy, especially when you have five. And they have your inscription. <laughs> so you've got five of them, so they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like to actually own Olympic gold medals? It's kind of surreal because, you know, this is something that you've been dreaming about for your whole entire life. And ever since I knew, like, what the word Olympics meant, I always knew that I wanted to win a gold medal at the Olympic Games. And so now to, like, hold it and know that it's actually mine and it's it's almost like you know 23 years is like in this one little mm. piece of metal and so it's it's kind of a lot to take in when you're just sitting there looking at it because it's very it's surreal to know that your dreams have come true and you know not many people's do because only one person can win that olympic all-around gold medal and to know that i was that one in 2008 is incredible now here's the weird thing about you which i want to explore because i'm just a humble Brit, trying to get to grips with this American Olympic squad. And here you are, you're called Nastia Luke. <laughs> you're born in Moscow, both your parents were Russian, and both competed for the Soviet Union, yes. right? Why are you representing America? <laughs> and why are you speaking in this lovely American accent? <laughs> and why are you not speaking like this, <laughs> representing Russia? <laughs> well, um, we moved over to the United States when I was two and a half years old. And my parents, after they finished their competitive career in gymnastics, their dream was to always open up a gymnastics school and coach gymnasts and hopefully on to world championships and Olympic Games. And they knew that, you know, back at the time in, you know, 1989, 1990, they, that wasn't really possible in Russia. Mm -hmm. And so they knew that they wanted to move to the United States to hopefully give the opportunity to be able to create a gymnastics school. And so that's kind of what they did is they, you know, packed a few suitcases, not much money, just a toddler me, <laughs> and got on a plane and, you know, just went after their dreams. And where did you where did you start in America? New Orleans. New Orleans. Out of all places. And it was the week of Mardi Gras when we moved Must from have been a crazy thing. It was for the crazy. I was two and a half years old. My parents didn't know a lick of English and um, you know, here we are in, in the middle of <laughs> Mardi Gras and they were like, Oh my gosh, what have we done? Where have we moved and uh, you know things ended up being okay we stayed there for a year and then we moved to Dallas you look for all intents and purposes like a classic Dallas girl I do yeah and do, yet I can do see... I take that as a compliment yes I love, <laughs> okay. I love girls of Dallas okay but the but it's just strange to me that I mean, do you ever feel like going back to Russia do you go back to Russia we do I used to try to go back once a year to I have grandparents that still live there one great-grandma she's 93 and um, my mom actually was there for 10 days she just got back yesterday to visit but mm -hmm. now because I'm you know in intensive training I can't quite hop on a plane and cross the country but the last time I was there was three years ago and how does your grandmother feel about you she representing America <laughs> um I think they're okay with it. You know, I think they travel back and forth quite a bit too, and um, you know, hopefully they'll move over here eventually. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, they've just been so supportive of it all, and with my parents. And I think that they were very nervous when my mom just she's the only child, and mm -hmm. I'm the only child. So when my mom left Russia and her parents, she lived with her you know parents until she got married. And I think that they were very nervous moving it's over to a different country. It's an incredible thing for it, for your mom to have done. And your dad and yet they must now be so proud of you mm -hmm. to to have come to this country with nothing not even the ability to speak the language mm -hmm. and to have this little tiny shrimp with them <laughs> who goes on to win an olympic gold medal for their adopted country mm -hmm. an amazing thing thank you how, how did they feel when you won the gold 
Well, my mom wasn't there. She was out walking the streets of Beijing. She gets too nervous watching, so she <laughs> really? actually went to like some Chinese temple, and um, you know, I tried to call her as soon as I knew that I won, but she turned her phone on silent so nobody would break the news to her. So she was ignoring my calls. I finally texted her and I said, hi mom, I won, period. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and that's how she found out. So she rushed back over to the arena to try and make it in time for the medal ceremonies. And you know, I've never really seen my dad cry. And the one time that I saw him have tears in his eyes when, was when I was getting my gold medal and then the flag was coming up in the national anthem. And I think there was just so many years of not just hard work, but different obstacles and injuries and, and things that I had to overcome and, and being, you know, over the hill at just 18 years old. At yeah, I mean, you were ancient. Uh, ancient. I mean, what am I going to be now? Like, still a standing. dinosaur, yeah. And <laughs> so I think that so many different thoughts and feelings were going through both of our minds, but to know that it finally worked, you know, it the hard also work. the culmination of your father's dream mm -hmm. in many ways. I mean, America gets quite a bad rap from a lot of people at the moment with all the economic strife mm -hmm. and everything else. But America's been very good to you and your family, hasn't it? It definitely has. And I think it's given us so many amazing opportunities. And to have now not just one, but three gymnastics schools in the Dallas area and, you know, have over 3,000 kids enrolled. And every day you walk into that gym and you're just, you know, I'm thankful for these opportunities that this country has given us. And to be able to represent them is, it's a huge honor to me um, to be able to wear the American flag on my leotard. Are you, do you still have dual citizenship, or are you now just pure? I have pure, dual citizenship. You do. So do you still do you consider yourself really American, or both? You know, it's it's hard to answer that question. I think I I definitely consider myself American, just because I grew up here. Um, I've more likely this was my first language. You know, I, I can speak fluent in Russian, but speak to me in Russian. Come. On. Okay. What do you want me to say? No, what do, I wouldn't understand you anyway. So it makes a difference. The only Russian I know is Vali Lublo. Okay. Which I think means I love you, doesn't it? That was close. Which is a bit awkward, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all I know in Russian. Yeah, tu le bleu. That means I love you. Really? Yeah. You got that on camera? This is a big <laughs> moment. My wife won't be happy, but I like it. Um, so go on, a bit more. I want to hear... Okay. Tell me a little bit. Let's talk in sort of Olympic speak. Okay. Um, я теперь тренируюсь опять, чтобы надеяться попасть на вторую Олимпиаду. Fantastic. It's a very sexy language, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you think? I mean, not, I'm not knocking the way Dallas people speak, <laughs> but it really is, I think. You know, it's funny because now every time I go back to Russia, they say I have, like, an American accent speaking Russian. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know that was possible, but thanks. <laughs> but, you know, it was funny growing up. My parents have a little bit more of an accent, and, I mean, they started speaking the language and learning English because we watched like Barney and Sesame Street together. <laughs> That's how they learned English. And so, you know, anytime we see that, it's just so funny that I started going to preschool and kindergarten and I was bringing home my books and my, you know, homework and they were kind of looking over my shoulder trying to learn it with me. So, you know, to see how far we've come in, in the matter of years is just, um, it's, it's very inspiring to me. Obviously, they're my parents, and, and I look up to them, but I looked up, look up to them for more reasons than just them being my mm. parents. It's, it takes a lot to just get on a plane and go somewhere Incredible where... Incredible courage, I think, to do a that. A lot of courage, and I think that, you know, courage was one of the main things that got me to where I am today because I could have just given up a few times when I had an injury, and, you know, peop many people said that I wouldn't make the Olympic team because I was too old and, and too injured and, you know, this and that, but to have that courage to step up to it and to keep going after your dreams. Let's take a little break. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about the fact you shouldn't really be here. You said you weren't going to be competing. And then you became <laughs> the comeback kid at the grand old age of how old are you? 22. I mean, really ridiculous decision. <laughs> yeah, you're finished. You should be in some sort of knacker's yard for ex-gymnasts. <laughs> so after the break, we're going to discuss this.